very good. Now, don't forget to speak very, very clearly. Diagonally. Even the magical world operates best with clear instructions. Otherwise, the consequences can be pretty unpleasant. In software development, though, instructions are even more important. Hundreds of thousands of dollars and several man years will go down the drain if the engineers and customers don't have a common understanding of what the final product should be like. That's why we have to document acceptable system behavior. Join us as we explore acceptance criteria and learn how to meet user expectations. In every project, there's a big gap in understanding between a client and a doer. Even when they both speak the same language, it can be hard to translate what a client wants the app to do into manageable tasks that engineers can work on. So, in the Agile approach, this communication is strictly formatted to eliminate any misunderstanding. This format is called user stories. We all speak the language of stories. Stories are how the world and the people around us become interesting and whole. That's why it's a great method to describe not just your app's features, but also the user's desires and intent. A user story follows a simple template. As a type of user, I want to perform some action so that I reach some goal. Features like password recovery, favorite button, or share screen gain much more contacts when rephrased as user stories. You see the difference, right? A user story shifts focus towards solving actual problems. And solving problems is not only more satisfying than checking off abstract tasks, but also a way more collaborative experience. A team aimed to find a problem solution will come up with more creative features. While user stories themselves are great for motivation, communication, and collaboration purposes, they are not all that's needed to ensure that the product works as expected. Finally, let's talk about acceptance criteria. If you've seen our videos on software planning and documentation, you might be unsure how stories are different from functional and non-functional requirements. And when do acceptance criteria come in? Well, everything starts with user stories. They describe what a person using your product should be able to do. Then we go into specific, often technical details in requirements. They describe how the software should provide that functionality to the user. If the requirements answer the question how, then acceptance criteria specify how exactly or what should happen. If these criteria are fulfilled, the feature is considered acceptable by the client. It means it did its job exactly as was intended, as the user expected. This format of writing acceptance criteria is simple and universal. It's called rule-oriented, and it can even be found in real life, in situations where strict rules are applied. In software development, though, you sometimes need to be more specific. Some cases will benefit from a special method called scenario-oriented acceptance criteria. Scenarios are sequences of actions a user must take. They are typically written using given, when, then format, which works like this. You start by describing the preconditions to the behavior that's about to begin. If there are several preconditions, you can also use the form and. Next, you use when to describe the action a user is performing considering those preconditions. Finally, write out the outcome of that behavior via then. Depending on the behavior you're describing, a scenario can be extended with more preconditions, actions, and outcomes. Also, if this sequence reminds you of test cases, you're not wrong. The given, when, then format can be used for both user story description and testing, helping QA decide if the feature is accepted or not. That one scenario we've just created is one acceptance criterion, and each user story should have at least one. You can imagine how many criteria must be written. So, who creates acceptance criteria? Acceptance criteria must be written before any development starts because the product backlog is formed from user stories and their criteria. The process is typically initiated by a product owner, a stakeholder actively involved in driving the product vision and providing feedback to the team. 
but it's never the task of just one person. A business analyst and a project manager often join in to review acceptance criteria before the whole development team gathers to brainstorm about solving a customer's problem. This collaboration and a chance for everyone to write the criteria help the team embody the product vision and create a larger sense of purpose. If you've been tasked with writing acceptance criteria, there are a few things to know. First, avoid telling how the user story should be implemented. Your focus is on what happens. Leave some space for developers to explore the best ways to transform the intent into the final product. They might get very creative. Next, phrase your criteria in the most concise, simple sentences using language that anyone can understand. People with no technical background, managers, and stakeholders should have the same understanding as the devs. That's the whole point. Similar to user stories, write criteria in the active voice, always indicating who acts and why. A user is at the root of everything, and this should remain clear. One final piece of advice is to avoid negative sentences, as they don't remove the vagueness. If you don't want something to happen, make a decision about what should happen instead. Otherwise, you may not enjoy the result. Agile development is all about preparation. That's why documentation is such a coveted topic in the community. Let us know what other types of product documents you want us to make a video about, and subscribe to be sure you get our next installment in this series. Stay tuned.